another edition of Blitz Extra here on GhostSanAngelo.com. I am Quinton Martinez. I am the Lakeview Beat Writer. Sitting next to me is Assistant Sports Editor Paul Harris who takes care of Central. We are without Mike Whitson today who uh, has the area, the area beat on lockdown. We'll do our best to uh, touch on all the schools that he would have touched on this week. Uh, so uh, we'll continue with that here in just a moment. But uh, starting off looking at last week, <laughs> it, it's hard to imagine that there could have been uh, as an exciting uh, of a game as Central played a week ago. But but uh, last week's game with Cooper, you know, was pretty darn exciting as well, Paul. Yeah, it looked like we might be headed to overtime again. Uh, Central lining up for a field goal, last play of the game. Matt Opencar hits it, 28-yarder. Looks like we're headed to overtime, but a false start pushes it back five yards, and he misses from 33, and Cooper survives 23 to 20. So it's a disappointing loss for Central. You know, um, they had chances to win that game. Uh, you know, the offense just couldn't capitalize in the red zone on a couple of occasions, including on that final drive when they reached the nine. And then the defense, which really limited quarterback Clayton Nicholas for a lot of the game. You know, he's headed to Texas Tech, great quarterback, and he only had about 150 yards heading into the fourth quarter. And then uh, with about 11 minutes left in the game, they've got him pinned third and 19. He hits an 88-yard touchdown pass, and that was just a backbreaker. Central was up 20-16 to 16 at that point. Tavion Ritchie just had an 82-yard interception return for a touchdown to put him in control. And then that 88-yarder really, really turned things around. So... Uh, you know, tough loss for Central, but you got to remember Cooper had beat them 55 to 21 last year, so still, you know, an encouraging result for the Bobcats moving forward. Back to back tough games uh, for the Bobcats. Uh, they go 1 1 over those last two. Move over to the Lakeview Chiefs, who uh, dropped another another uh, game on uh, Friday night. They lost 32 14 to Amarillo Caprock out at San Angelo Stadium to drop them to 0 3 on the season. You know, I know a lot of people might look and say, oh, they gave up 32 points. The defense that they, we'd seen in the first couple of weeks was a little bit of a farce, but that's not true at all. Uh, the defense, once again, uh, one, of those, one of those touchdowns was a, a Kickoff return for touchdown that came right after a 78-yard touchdown pass to Miles Wheeler when it looked like Lakeview had actually gained the momentum. It's kind of a backbreaker. Amarillo Caprock put up 32 points in the first half, but was shut out in the second half. And, and as a whole, Lakeview's defense has been awesome in the second half. They have only given up seven points in three games after halftime, so that says a lot about the adjustments and just you know the team continuing to fight. But a lot of those, a lot of the scores that we've seen so far this year out, out of uh, Lakeview's opponents have been when the field was severely tilted in their favor. I mean, they've, a lot of those touchdowns have come when uh, they've they've had favorable field position. So we've seen time and again that when when Lakeview's defense has 50, 60 yards behind them, that they, they're able to make the stops. The offense is slowly starting to come along. They're trying to get their offensive line healthy. So you know there are pl plenty of things to look forward to uh, this week as they as they get a chance to to look at Midland Greenwood. Moving forward to this week. You know, like I said, Greenwood this week is the homecoming opponent. Uh, you know th that is going to be the contest uh, out, out at San Angelo Stadium. Greenwood is a team that uh, you know, if you remember last year, Lakeview had a, you know two and a half score lead basically, and they let that get away in the waning moments of the fourth quarter. So there's a lot of motivation on the line with this. Plus, it's homecoming, so you know it's a very interesting opponent. Greenwood, uh, you know, not really sure what's going to happen at quarterback. They lost their quarterback to an injury last week, so that's something to look forward to. And the, they're quite frankly, the Rangers' defense has given up a lot of rushing yards this year, so uh, if the wishbone can finally kind of get some traction for the first time all year, you know, that could be a deciding factor in this game. Uh, you know, the coaches feel pretty confident about this game, and they think this is this is another one they're going to be very competitive in, so this could be an opportunity for the Lakeview Chiefs to get their first one of the season. I know uh, Central's on the road once again, Paul. That's right. They're traveling to Odessa High at Ratliff Stadium. You know, the good news is uh, Bradley Marquez isn't there anymore. You know, running back last year, he's at Tech now. He torched Central 378 rushing yards last year and pretty much single-handedly won the game as Odessa High kind of stole it in the fourth quarter. Uh, the, the, the bad news for Central is Odessa High is coming off its first win of the season, a pretty solid result, 14-7 over Amarillo Tascosa. And uh, their, you know, their new featured back, Ivan Subia, he had 159 rushing, 79 receiving in that game. And quarterback Johnny Campos, he had um, 74 yards rushing. He's not a big pass threat, he likes to run quite a bit. So, you know, um, kind of a new look offense for the Broncos, and we'll see how the Bobcats handle it this time. 
you know, we're getting a chance to look at some of the area games, you know, that uh, our, our buddy Mike would normally be looking at right now. Last week, there were some very interesting outcomes, you know, including uh, our game of the week, Paul. Uh, that's right. You know, Wall and Sav, a great game. Two teams that are undefeated. And uh, kind of a surprising result, uh, in my opinion. Wall uh, took San Saba down 29-7. to And that's three impressive wins now for Wall. They beat Bangs the first week. Then they got past Merkel. And then now San Saba. San Saba's coming off a, you know upset over Goldthwaite the week before. And uh, Wall shut out San Saba the final three quarters. Uh, while Wall's offense scored a touchdown in each of those final three quarters to slowly pull away for a 29-7 to win. And quarterback Colin McCrory led the way. He had 115 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Other games uh, last week, Water Valley uh, got a huge victory over Sterling City. That's right. Uh, Water Valley took down Sterling City 64-34 to and uh, another big matchup between two great teams in our area. Uh, and again, I, I, I kind of surprising, you know, Sterling City's coming off the big win over Garden City, uh, looking like they might be the best six-man team in the area outside of Richmond Springs. But uh, Water Valley took control, outscored them 32 to nothing in the third quarter to really turn the momentum. And uh, Connor Copley had two interceptions, including a 74-yarder he took back for a touchdown, and that changed everything in the game. So big win for Water Valley. Now it's looking like that. They might be the best team in West Texas outside of the Coyotes and Richmond Springs. Moving back over to 11-man man football, uh, you know, we've been, you talk about how impressive Wall has been. Sonora, I mean, what they were able to do last week to Ballinger. I know Ballinger was playing four, four key players who were out of that game, but Sonora puts up 54 points by halftime. Time. They cruise to that 54 to nothing victory. Ballinger, uh, you know, they're in a situation where uh, it's kind of a gut check week this week. We'll talk about their matchup here in a minute. But uh, you know, the Bearcats were limited to 42 yards of offense. Uh, Clayton Parks uh, for Sonora had 234 yards passing last week uh, for the Broncos. So Sonora looking every bit as impressive maybe as Wall has through the first three weeks of the season. Also Brady Fredericksburg, you know, uh, something that you got a chance to see uh, in our uh, area roundup uh, in um, Tuesday's paper. Uh, Brady, uh, you know, winning a shootout 66 to 50 over Fredericksburg, having 564 rushing yards, just an unbelievable rushing attack, including a 280 uh, by Jacob Hodges. So, uh, you know, Brady's offense seems to be really rolling. I know defensively, Glenn Jones is a little upset about that. Moving forward to some of this week's matchups, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about that Ballinger, Ballinger Wall matchup. Wall is obviously as, as high as they could be. Ballinger, it's kind of maybe harder to imagine where they could be any lower than where they are right now. It's a real gut check situation uh, for the Bearcats to uh, see if they can stand up to a really quality opponent in the wall. Also, uh, interesting matchup, uh, Sterling City. Uh, they're trying to rebound from their uh, big loss to Water Valley last week against Sands, a team that 45 them last year, which but was kind of the spark for the role that they went on that uh, ended up with them uh, making it to the state championship game before they lost to Richland Springs. So, very interesting contest in, in that one. I know there's a couple more to look at, Paul. Yeah, you know, I think a good one's El Dorado at Bront. Uh, that'll be our game of the week. You know, Bront, two, two impressive wins to start the year, blown out. Junction and Roby. They were off last week and now El Dorado's coming to town. Uh, El Dorado coming off a 50 to nothing win over TLCA. Uh, that helped them rebound after losing to Erie and County. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how that matchup goes. El Dorado is going to have its hands full with Bront. They've got an explosive running back in Creed Colson and the new quarterback Ty Lee. He, you know, he's looking impressive in his first two starts. And then another game we got, uh, it could be a, a good matchup, is winners at Menard. You know, winners after losing to Coleman by one point to start the year, they bounced back with a couple of wins. And Menard, you know, they've been living on the edge. They Two, two tight wins. They pulled off a seven-point win over Cross Plains in their first game, and then last week, uh, rally in the fourth quarter beat uh, Rock Springs in overtime. So we'll see if they keep on living dangerously this week. So it should be a lot of fun stuff to look forward to this week. Uh, look, for, look for all of our coverage uh, on our uh, website on GoSanAngelo.com, our Blitz page, where you can get all the information, maps to the games, uh, all the season results, statistics, uh, as well as all of our game stories and coverage, uh, as well as in Saturday morning Standard Times, where you can find our Blitz section with all uh, recaps of all the action from this week. Don't forget also, uh, you can catch us on Facebook. We have a Blitz West Texas football page, and you can also follow us on Twitter under uh, BlitzWTFB. We will see you again next week with another edition of the Blitz Extra here on GhostAndAngelo.com.